get to the chopper. Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back office teardown lab. Broken robot hand. So you can see I'm no longer able to simulate a grasping robot hand because the kids have broken it. And uh, I was having a quick look at this and can I be bothered to open it up? And I thought, yes, I can, because this would have been awesome when I was a kid. I'd have loved this. Um, it does have a little bit of a broken finger, but it appears the tendons aren't working. So we're going to have a look inside. Uh, and yeah, and I would have loved this as a kid. And I think I'm going to open it up and have a look because it's the sort of thing that uh, I kind of have an idea of how it works. And I know there's going to be strings and effectively tendons in there. And when you pull the lever, it sort of pulls on those fingers. But I don't really know for sure. So <laughs> now I will know for sure. Uh, on something that uh, I, I can't really break any further and we've just chucked it out. Oh, that's a very stiff screw. Let's try this one. Just watched the old London Marathon. Very much inspired. My uh, running distance never quite got up to the uh, London Marathon. I've done a half and I run around eight miles or so on a weekend in the, among my and then my boot camps and stuff. Um, so yeah, I've got a long way to go. The funny thing is when you do a half marathon, there's no way you can imagine just doing it again. <laughs> I have no idea how those guys, you know, mentally prepare themselves for that uh, onslaught. But yeah, very inspiring stuff, really. I uh, never was a runner, and uh, it's something that I started doing quite recently, maybe for about a year now. Uh, but yeah, it's easy. Easy in that you can, easy to run. You know, if you're a human, you should just be able to run. You're sort of designed to. So you don't need much equipment and you don't need much skill. Just put one foot in front of the other and try not to fall over. How fast or slow you go is up to you, but frankly, you're the only one measuring that. And you're the only one who cares. Right, I've got the screws. They're not really uh, that willing to sort of flop out, which is a bit annoying. And it's quite firm here, I think. There's a possibility there could be some adhesive. No, maybe not. Ah, clips. Yeah. Definitely some clip action going on. You can see that. You can see here. There's definitely a weird a weirdness going on. No screw in there, so yeah, it's just clips. All the clips, all the time. What a fascinating thing! Ah, oh, okay. We lost the hand. We lost the hand, guys, and that's because of this. So that's not good. Oh, I suspect that could be one of the reasons. No, that's the, this bit here you see is the return for the spring. So you've got this little lever and then when it's in there, obviously that spring just sort of pulls back against that stop. I think it must've just come out of there. But let's hold that. Uh, yeah, baby, there's a bit of grasping going on. So uh, might just do, a reasonable fix on this. I mean, if it's possible, I'm not even sure what sort of glue I could use here. Have a look. It's it's definitely a bendy joint. Um, if we use an epoxy, epoxy will break. If we use uh, actually, most glues, the only thing I could think of is maybe using heat. Um, could dab it with a soldering iron. Let's try that and. Uh, risk contaminating my soldering iron even more than it is already, but it's due a clean. I'll get a bit of emery paper for out later. Interesting enough for the thumb here, they've uh, only used one screw, so they uh, have limited its crushing ability somewhat. Yeah, I could, I'm trying to think if there's any way you could uh, modify this. I would say that you could see that this bar that moves in and out pulls those tendons, so you could have a servo but it's never gonna it's never gonna have the killing grip that you require if you're gonna make an evil type robot but this is sort of maybe a bit like the hands-on tom servo you know on the mystery science theater 3000 it's sort of just a floppy hand at the moment but we're gonna try to animate it i'm going to clean my uh, soldering iron tip um for no reason really because it's just about to get disgustingly dirty Let's have a little look, see how we might do this. So I'm going to try to hold 
that bit up to that bit. So you see they're sort of overlapping. And then I'm just going to dab it in a couple of places. So it's basically like a weld, um, a heat weld. And it's flopping all over the place and it's not cooperating. So you're basically trying to make these two materials as one. Um, and if this doesn't work, I could try the hot air because I think the hot air would definitely cause these things to melt. So you're, it's a bit like a, a glue gun. You're trying to. Oh, 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 oh! Really, it really uh, went, uh, ran away from me then. Yeah, that actually uh, looks quite welded. If you see that in there, I don't want to pull on it too much because it's going to be fragile. I almost wish I had some more filler material. I'm just having a quick look around the back off, see if I've got any sort of thermoplastic, something else I could use as a filler. Um, what is made out of a thermoplastic? How about this white stuff? Mm, yeah, not as good. Yeah, if we almost had spare, spare of this plastic, we could sort of shave off something inside and use it as a filler. So I'm gonna take my knife there's not really much material here, but I kind of feel I might be able to just shave a bit off in here from this part. Yeah, I can. Whoa, no. He said shaving it off and it firing into the pile of junk. Let's try to shave the other pile. Um, risking, of course, structurally making this much weaker, but fine. That's okay. Don't escape. There we go. We, we managed to salvage it this time. <laughs> no idea where the last piece went. So I'm going to use my um, forceps, my archery forceps, because this is a medical procedure. Of course, we're repairing a hand, a robot hand. So that's locked in there now. So we'll take our joint, try to get it to hold onto that roller solder so it's nice and flat. Got our soldering iron. Again though, this would be quite nice to maybe melt with the heat uh, gun and drip this on. Oh, should we try that? Yes. Indeed, we'll try that. If I plug it in. Let's go. So I'm gonna run it at my full temperature, but lower the airflow. So I don't want it blowing all over the place. Ah, the hand's moving. Let's lock this hand in a bit better. There. You can't see it, but I've put these two things now so the hand is more locked in. Moving the forceps now. It's looking pretty good actually. I think I think we're pretty much there. Made a little hole in it though. Held it a little bit too long in one place. Okay, I think at the risk of just making this worse and worse and worse, I think we'll leave it be. Yeah, that sort of bit of filler material um, may or may not have worked how I intended. But yeah, let's put it all back together. So that's that bit. Mm. It's going to be a tricky one because uh, it's a shame because this retainer is on this side rather than this side. You kind of have to put it into a broken thing. Fine. Effectively, that should be it. See, it's kind of holding, kind of holding itself together there. If I can just keep that there long enough to get this bit on, I think we're okay. Ah! 
he said, then immediately letting go of it. So where it failed actually was there, that bit pin basically had fallen out. So I suspect whatever has catastrophe befell this to cause it to crack, which was probably bending it back too much, trying to pick up something or slapping someone around the face with it, has uh, caused it to not only snap, but lose, uh, lose that pin in the process. Just concentrating a little bit here got a, one screw still in here once I can get that kind of tightened yeah we're on the home stretch now come on stay together with me so on how long this is gonna last I'm gonna estimate about maybe five minutes tops I wonder how Asimo's hands are made I suspect far better quality than this but probably same principle I mean how else these are all modeled on the sort of human body you can see the all that stuff going on when you do that and you've got apparently tendons that run up your arm believe it or not up your forearm for operating your fingers so it's pretty much the same as this I'm gonna try it out <laughs> yeah that's so creepy I love it I loves it I'm going to try to uh, pick up something with it. I think that's mandatory, of course. Last screw. Mm, mm. I think that's it. That's all there is to it. Yeah, the little finger is actually pretty good. Ready? Get to the chopper. Uh, it's just feeling it. Let's try something else. Ready? It's it's designed for grasping very particular sized and shaped objects. Hey, cubes, it's fine with. Oh, look, it can carry a cube any which way. Um, something round. How about this? No, no, sir. How about your mobile phone? Uh, no. Help me, help me. So there you go, that's how you repair a robot hand and how you do a pretty kind of horrible plastic weld. Um, but well, how you do quite a nice plastic weld and then try to add filler material and make it look a bit worse. That's fine, battle damage as ever. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Oh, that is creepy.